Welcome to another edition of Inside Leatherneck Athletics. My name is Brandon Casimir, and I'm graced with the sophomore redshirt captain, Mitch Granger of the men's tennis team. Mitch, happy to have you. Thank you for having me, Brandon. This is a pleasure. Uh, I'm, we're all very excited. <laughs> now, just to start, uh, the men's tennis team has been on the road a lot this season. Uh, Galesburg uh, is sort of a home match, if you include that, with the uh, Macomb home court, of course. Uh, you've had a total of six meets at home and 15 on the road. How much does a team have to prepare to spend that much time playing on other courts? I think uh, with any sports, it's always tough to go on the road. Uh, traveling can, can really do a number on a team, but we, we've responded well to it. Logging in the miles uh, is tough at, at some point with the uh, schoolwork that you, you, know, you have to do on the road and things like that, but our team you know, responds very well to going on the road. One good thing about tennis is home court advantage really isn't uh, prevalent in the sport simply because there's not huge crowds being drawn to each match. So each, each court you play on is very similar to the ones that we play here in Macomb. Would you say more of a home court advantage for you is like playing indoor as opposed to outdoor? It's always tough transitioning from indoors to outdoors. Uh, right now, our bulk of our season has been, has been indoor tennis, and now we're about to go outside. So when we do start our home match against Denver April 4th, which is our first home match outside, it will be a little bit of an uh, advantage for us simply because teams haven't been playing outside yet, and we have been. Fantastic. Um, Mishishka Washington took over as a coach this year. Uh, I've met Mishishka. Fantastic man. He's a man of a humble aura, a uh, man of wise words. Um, tell me about the stylistic differences between Mishishka and Coach Kane from last year. Let me just start off by saying Mishishka has done a fantastic job with this program. Uh, he, he came in, this is his first year, and what more could you ask of a guy from his first year? You never know what you're going to get from a head coach. So he's done a fantastic job. Uh, as far as his coaching style, it does differ a lot from our old coach. Uh, Mishiska is the type of person who, who, dem who demands respect, and he doesn't ask it of you. He just kind of carries himself that way. Uh, and he's the type of guy who, who wants you to walk the walk and talk the talk. If you're gonna if you're gonna say something, he wants you to follow through on it. So really, he's put a lot of responsibility on us and the people on the team who are in the leadership roles, uh, which has been been great to see because we didn't have that last year. So very very nice to see that out of um, our first year head coach Mishiska. I follow his tweets. Uh, he actually recently just followed me back. I was really excited about it. He always has inspirational things to say. Does that help your team when you're preparing for being on the road a lot, just being? Absolutely. If you, if you know who Lovey Smith is, former head coach of the Chicago Bears, Mishiska really carries himself that way. He's somebody who, who, like I said, leads by example, never gets in your face, is always positive. And with tennis players, uh, that's what you need because when you're out there by yourself and you're alone, uh, tennis is very individualistic sport. You need, you need constant encouragement and, and support, and Mishiska has done that the whole, whole season. In spades. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, three more meets before conference, two of them in beautiful Macomb. <coughs> Hopefully it's beautiful, not raining. Um, tell me about how your team has been gearing up before the Summit League meets in Denver. Well, first and foremost, Denver's coming next week, uh, and they're the conference team that has a bullseye on their back. They're by far the best team in, in the conference. They're ranked top 16 in the country. So whenever a team of that caliber comes to Macomb, obviously you're preparing you know, as much as you can to possibly to have that kind of upset. So the guys are really putting in some nice work now. The weather's getting nicer, the sun's shining, so we're getting out on the courts, which is nice. But going forward to the Summit League Championships, um, first and foremost, just very excited to be a part of the, the championships. And you never know what could happen. You know, you see the NCAA tournament right now. You see these Cinderella teams. Why not us? That's how we're feeling about going into the conference tournament uh, when, it, when it happens April 25th in Denver. So you guys see yourself as a little bit of an underdog. Absolutely. We, we've had a rough start to the, the conference season. Uh, as of right now, we're 0-4. We're we've had some tight matches, tough matches, but you know anything can happen with tennis, uh, especially outdoors in Denver. The altitude is very high. Balls are flying. Uh, if, we can, if we can respond uh, like I think we can, I think we'll have a nice shot of, uh, of upsetting some teams in the conference tournament. So try to be like the second Hunger Games and catch fire. Hopefully. That would be the goal. Yes. Fantastic. Uh, as a captain, you have a vital role in recruiting new players for Western. Uh, explain your tactics in reloading the team with new talent. Yeah, I don't think I'm necessarily unique in that aspect. All of the guys on the team, what's nice about the tennis community, it's a very tight-knit community. So players that I've grown up playing against, players that I've grown up uh, competing against, I'm going to naturally ask them, hey, why don't you take a look at Western? That's what everybody on the team is doing. Currently, uh, I won't give away any, uh, too many of our secrets, but we have a line on you know, some, some foreign players. We have some foreign connections on our team. 
we have some lines on uh, some players in the Chicago area from where I'm from. So in general, all, we ask all of our guys to kind of reach out to friends and hitting partners growing up to say, hey, take a look at Western. We've got some exciting things going on. Why don't you take a look at the program? Well, yeah, you have uh, Max Hederkall from Sweden. You have Christoph Hertel mm -hmm. from Germany. Of course, you're from the Chicago area. Do you, most of you guys are from the Midwest, so mm -hmm. how do you get lines from East Coast, West Coast, Southern uh, regions? Yeah, there, there's a, uh, a tennisrecruiting.net website that uh, really does a fantastic job of, of recruiting players. I'm very involved in that website, and I uh, quite frequently am looking at the recruiting list, the ranking list, and when I see something that catches my eye, I'll relay that to Coach, and Coach does a, a wonderful job too. He's getting bombarded with emails. Uh, videos every day of players that want to come here. So really the recruiting process is a really thorough process. Mm -hmm. What would make a recruit want to come to Western over another school in the Summit League Conference? Right now, uh, and not trying to beat a dead horse, we have Mishiska Washington. He was an <laughs> ATP uh, two, top 250 in the world tennis player. He's got a vast pool of knowledge. I mean, why wouldn't you want to come play for somebody who not only is uh, great uh, leadership wise, but also has that tennis experience. It's just, it's just great. Uh, I'm not going to ask you to be a dead horse, but you said Mishishka, you're talking about recruiting. How's the future looking for Leatherneck men's tennis? It's looking very bright, very, very bright, especially with Mishishka at the helm. Uh, I can't stress what he's done for our program. And although right now the win-loss total from an outsider's perspective, it doesn't look great, there's been a lot of posit positives this year. Uh, with the absence of Benu, uh, one of our seniors with an injury, we've had some other um, unfortunate events happen to our team with players leaving the team. but. Uh, right now, myself, Max, and Christoph, we're being forced to play high in the lineup, which has garnered great uh, competition for us. So we're improving every day, every match. And if we can just tap into that next year, coupled with the recruits that we're expected to have come in, you know, the sky's the limit for this team. And we're really thinking that next year is the year that we will be contending for a conference title. And make a huge push to have that Summit League crown. Oh, right on your head. That's the that that would be the number one goal. And and uh, what's nice in the recruiting process, going back to your earlier question, is this is a winnable conference. Mm -hmm. Although we have Denver top sixty in the country, this is really a conference that's up for grabs, and that's a selling point for for future Leathernecks. That's what we like to hear. And quickly before we finish, uh, I know it's not for another two months, but who's your early favorite to win the French Open this year? Oh, it's got to be uh, Rafael Nadal. He is the king of clay. He's been dubbed the king of clay, quickly becoming one of the best players of all time. He's won seven French Opens in a row, so you got you, you have to you have to give him the uh, give him the slight edge. Although, in my humble opinion, I still think Novak Djokovic, one of the best players in the world, has been slumping a little bit in the Grand Slams. Expect him to be in the finals, facing off against Rafael Nadal. No Brit, Andy Murray, no uh, Roger Federer. No, Roger Federer just lost to uh, Kainichi Shikori the other night. He's he's slumping as well, and Andy Murray's going through a coaching change. So, Rafael Nadal's my pick. Gotcha. And with that, we are going to end Leatherneck Athletics inside. Uh, thank you again, Mitch Granger, for gracing us with your presence and giving us a little insight into the tennis team. Uh, we'll see you later. Have a good night.